Thank you very much indeed, Director Ceremonies. Your honors, ministers, current and former, your presence, governor, and all the protocol officers. My name is mentioned, and that is who I am. Uh, the children and grandchildren of Comrade Marco Siku, friends, colleagues, I feel greatly honored to be here this afternoon or this morning, rather to say a few words in remembrance of Marco Osiku, a man who had fought side by side with me during the most challenging times in the history of our country, Namibia. Uh, I hope it's just appropriate if I may ask those people here present who were there during our leadership with Comrade Marco to stand up. I, I don't think that will be a waste of your time if, if it's possible because I know there are many who are here present. So thank you. Yeah, oh. So thank you. Well, babe, I don't know whether they are scared or it's because they think I'm, I'm no longer a small problem from basics. <laughs> but I'm not here for, for, a, political, for a political meeting. I'm in terms of what I remember about the Bible, so fine. And how? No, it's okay. It's okay. So fine, thank you. Uh, are the ceremonies, dear colleagues. I feel it was just important that I had requested these people to stand up. I'm most grateful to Meme Toini Hausiku, who deemed fit for me to come and say what I'm going to say in remembrance of a fallen hero. My association with Kore Marco to those who knew him was crucial during the liberation struggle of our country. When he passed on, maybe Tony told me not to stand in that I'm no longer a, 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 a member Swampo to come and say something at one of his memory cells at his house. My personal and political encounters with this late hero, Tony Marco Siku, to amaze immeasurable and informative and enriching circles. When I was elected as his deputy late 70s, I realized for the first time when we met that I was jeopardizing a hard-working, a visionary, a committed, and honest, and an honest again. More often than not, 
con el marco en AE, con mil formas con el día de veces. Porque we needed each other. You know, in particular, those of you who were here, what was referred to as William French was, in fact, a de facto national identity committee. We were doing the way of the liberal struggle on a national level, in spite of the fact that we were French. And we were led, we were directed, we were coordinated by this man. At many occasions, the two of us would meet before the scheduled meetings of the executive committee to strategize on how best we could convince other members of the executive committee on what we knew and believed was the right way to do. Mind you, if you are a good leader, I hope. And I hope most of you here are good leaders. Before you go to the meeting, you must have caucused so that whatever plans you have will sail through much easier than otherwise. And that's how we're doing it before we have it. Apart from the engagements, of the executive committee per se. Kurimaru and I had the done, I, I just hope we, we are having one, one speaker. And I, I would want all of us to listen to one speaker at one time. I am not the master of sermons, but I think it's just appropriate. Because if all of us start, you know, speaking, then I don't think there's really a need for, for, for us to be here. But there were times that we had activities. We thought the consent of other members of the executive committee whenever we felt that it was necessary with this. There were quite a lot of things that we did on our own in the interest of the liberal struggle without the consent of others. For example, my young sister was confined upon her release to Sokomo, where she was harassed, intimidated, and faced a possible is we, we know things were happening. We, we were concerned that she faced a possibility of being thrown in the ocean and so forth. I went to Hobley Marco. We shared the two of us, and luckily, we, we solicited financial assistance from late Bishop Kauruma. And accordingly, I had to hire a BMW to transport him from Sokomon to a depot where he was assisted by the late people of Shilongo to go over the border. Only the purpose knew this. Equally, when one of the former Sokomon patterns is sent in Marambo, Israelite in the Zambezi region escaped from prison here in Metro. He was captured, he was detained here, and then he escaped. He was brought to me by one of our then comrades, Omar Shikwampi, midnight, and I did not know what to do. But luckily, I succeeded to put him somewhere. The next morning, early in the morning, the only person I went to was Marcos. Together, we planned how to, you know, put him in the same place. 
We eventually succeeded to have him transported from here to the north and the only person among the leadership then who knew this was not other than Malbus. There are so many things that they, that they can you know, relate here. This man, Margot Ziku, you know, there is a general impression, particularly among the colleagues who are in exile, that those of us who are not in exile had the played less important you know, activities compared to them. I, 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 I think it's exactly. When you look, for example, there was an issue where people were detained, arrested, detained, and would disappear. When late Festus Naholo and Father Carrera were faced with detention, it was me and Kome Masiko who said, We planned, I went to fetch Naholo from the coast. Together with Let Carrera, I transported these people with the assistance of somebody else to South Africa, to Lesotho. So, and only, only, Uraosiku and I knew this, among all the members. There are so many things. What I know of Uraosiku. And that's why I'm here. I wouldn't have been here. This man is, was a leader. Mm -hmm. He was not a fearful, you, you know. When, comrade, don't see when he does comrade and be. Oh, what they put ya? If we do not do this, what the force are doing is nothing but intimidation. And if we get scared, this is precisely what they want us to do. It's, it, you know, is so spoken. Very determined, very focused, and you know, very articulate of what he wants to achieve. That was Marvel's Therefore, for those of you who have made it to come here today. We must know that this colleague called Marco Ausipu was one of the pillars of the repressive struggle who made it possible for this country to be independent. 1987, if my memory is not failing me, we attended the talks in Lusaka. I was summoned to, to the State House for the first time to say State House in Lusaka, where I met the defunding president. And he instructed me, when you go back to Namibia, go to Hibia, to come a that boy. He must give you money to buy a car, to take it to a depot to lend Fingo Shilongo, the father to this girl here. So that with this car, you will be able to facilitate the performances of the former competitors. When I came back, of course, we were with Marvin in Osaka. But when I, I, I came back, I went to him, I told him what had happened, and he accompanied me to go to Comrade Point. We gave money, went to buy the car. The challenge was in whose name? 
What is the answer to the United States? Because all of us were scared, to be very honest. But the, the last time you know, you had said it should be registered on my name. The main why I took it to the father of this girl, the people, and it was there until people were repatriated back, back home. If it was Marco, I was only going to do this. It, it's not a question of not having trusted other colleagues, no. It's a question of what do we do to make sure that some of this information does not leak out. It was this man. And he was a teacher, but he always had the time, you know, even if you go to him late in the evening or early in the morning, there was no way Marco to tell you that comrade, I'm busy, you know, preparing for my you know school work. You always have time for you to listen so that together you could play. It was Marco's. Uh, I, I do not know. And mind you, he, he was not doing this for monetary gain. This current in fighting in politics is about uh, money. The, the, there was no guarantee that Namibia would be independent while he's still alive to become a minister. That is was irrelevant. It was not there. There was no guarantee that he could not have ended up being killed by the force. When we had to take Naho and Karwar out, it was during the time when people were, were disappearing from detention. You know about Chief Kapoor. He disappeared from detention. You know Kore Nakawa. He disappeared. And today, these people were in that home. That's why we thought it was necessary for us to do our level of best to help these people, you know, and then you succeeded. It was from Lesotho, then they went to to UN, to New York, and went to Ari, to Abola. It was the work of this one. So, colleagues, there are so many things to remember regarding Komero I will not finish. I just decided to mention this view. We had a man. Your I'm sorry, I, I'm very patient, but you know, you must understand, I do not mean it in a negative way. I think they can testify who Mark was. I am not lying, I don't have to lie about my books. But maybe I'm telling me, I think we are happy that you have allowed us to share Marco Siku with you. We are also happy that Marco had lived to see the fruits of his labor as a freedom fighter. With these words, I thank you very much. Uh, may we please have a musical interlude? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.
ਅਤੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਨਕ ਦਾ ਜਿਸੇ ਦੀ ਔਰ ਜਿਸੇ ਦੀ ਦੁਆ ਜੇਈ ਵਿੱਚ ਐਂ ਤੁਰ ਪੂਰੀ ਐ ਦੀ ਦਾ ਦਿਨ ਮੈਟਰ ਦਾ ਜੋ ਆ ਨੋ ਲੋਂਗਰ ਐ ਸਵਪ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਵਨ ਥਿੰਗ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਕੈਨ ਨਾਟ ਬੀ ਏਬਲ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਔਰ ਵੀ ਕੈਨ ਡੂ ਐਸ ਹਿਊਮਨ ਬੀਇੰਗ we can never add or amend or change history history remain as intact as also as candid as it is because his contribution during those years so until the day he be adios to swapo is known unless you don't want to say and fed out this because this is a tendency in our country that those who have done their part we don't want to celebrate them we only want to celebrate them when they are dead maybe it's a culture of us as black people therefore we now have to blow our homes we have to blow our own bubusela and tell everyone in their ears what we have done and if we have got the opportunity to do so we can also do it through writing so in namibia when you mention the saying of nambinga the pungu the embula the namjebo how sick what do you call it nakawa people want to put something in their ears they don't want to hear but those who have the names and the names that i don't mention here they have done their part mala kabe ni kutu tate mbula tate na mbinga wa the said is true they were fighting for no price for no name but for the independence that we are doing today bono tarita sikisha so ya khara na yesi ho ka shiuri te so that we are kana eta tukambadra tukare tene ke kwa so ya kalunga ngo that we are kana to kwa sasibo ano we are not going to play anything that should be very loud and clear and the next generation the future leaders of this country we should make time to spend time with the elders that you know meet the likes of that in ambinga they be training them to at least listen to this stories of hope of which we will continue building this country namibia i'm not here to make a speech but yes to give the props